Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Richard, for the introduction. Uh, you did not butcher my name. Uh, that's OK. Uh, you got it right. Uh, and first of all, thank you all for joining in. Um, I know it's been uh, an ups and downs day, but uh, glad to have you here. Um, first of all, um, great work for the uh, Invitational. Uh, I have been following as much as I could. Uh, and really nice work, uh, very exciting. And uh, we do have an event coming up together uh, with Kayak Games and uh, Body ES, uh, which will be next week, Friday. So stay tuned. Uh, the topic of it will be game development. So if you're interested in the field and to hear some from the uh, industry uh, experts in Finland, uh, please do join. Uh, so, as for today's topic, uh, that will be health and wellness uh, in esports. And uh, a little bit about myself I am a physiotherapist. I'm based in Pori. Uh, and I'm also a esports physical performance coach for Roots Gaming, uh, on top of being uh, chairman of Pori Entrepreneurship Society. Uh, so, a little bit of everything and uh, very little free time, but it's, it's worth it because it's all fun. Um, so, uh, the reason why there is a physiotherapist in esports, um, I basically got my foot in, uh, during my studies while, um, checking of what, uh, research topic would I like to do for my thesis. And I wanted to be something that I enjoy reading about. Uh, I wanted it to be something that has not been done before. And both of these things kind of seem to lead towards esports. Uh, so what would be the most common complaint that esports players have? Well, that would be wrist pain. Um, it has come across very often. Um, players saying that they have numb fingers or they have um, palms that are burning. Uh, they have pain in the wrists um, or radiating pain upwards to the elbow. And uh, there is a lot of talk about gaming causing carpal tunnel syndrome uh, or uh, esports being a very um, injury prone area. Uh, but there wasn't any research on it. So I wanted to find out whether or not gaming does lead to carpal tunnel syndrome uh, or if it's just talking and the problem is somewhere else and how can we address that. Uh, so I picked carpal tunnel syndrome because uh, I'm also interested in uh, neurological rehabilitation. So uh, that was something that um, it's common and I'm quite passionate about finding out the solution to. Uh, so the way I did my research is I had a team, uh, Tikka Esports, uh, who are uh, CSGO players. Uh, they recorded a one week measurement for, my, for me. Uh, it was done via a uh, Mousetron software, which records exactly how much you move your mouse physically, uh, which helps us see does more movement cause more symptoms or do we need to look at something else? Uh, so while they were recording those measurements, uh, they were also taking um, a quiz every single day. They were filling a symptom diary which you can see uh, it included date, playtime, uh, basically the symptoms uh, who are typical for carpal tunnel syndrome, that would be numbness, burning, tingling, and pain. Uh, I wanted to know what are their most played games and how they perceived their own performance. Did they feel like the performance dropped or did they felt like the performance is the same as always? Um, so what the research found in the end, and of course the sample is very small, uh, and the research is the first of its kind, so we don't have any other reference to it, is that uh, the longer distance traveled by the mouse hand uh, led to higher symptoms, especially in burning of the mouse hand, uh, and that led to a decrease in performance. So um, the feedback from, from the whole research would be that there could be some indication for overuse uh, in esports and gaming. Uh, however, how much of it and what relates to it, we don't know yet, as it needs to be a bigger research. 
Uh, but this is a very good start of the conversation, uh, especially by saying uh, a lot of players retire due to injury, typically involving wrists. Um, it, it is a good conversation to start in how we can address that before it gets to that point, before somebody has to retire, before they develop symptoms. Um, how, how can we alleviate that and, and help prevent it? Because prevention would be key in having a very long career um, in a very safe way uh, in, in gaming industry. So um, why would we want to prevent? Uh, there has been a lot of players that have reported at some point having hand pain after playing for a long period of time. Uh, there's been cases of players reporting eye fatigue after playing uh, for a very long period of time. Um, there has been cases of uh, neck pain, low back pain, uh, any kind of wrist pain or burning symptoms. So um, we want to take all of that data and prevent it because it's not nice to get to the point where you get pain. So uh, through educating on how to do good health practices, good wellness practices, uh, how to help uh, prevent these problems from forming in the first place. Uh, because at least from my position, I want players to be able to perform. I want them to be able to do the best that they possibly can in every situation possible. And being prepared for that is uh, really half the step uh, towards that point. So um, physical performance and physical um, training, is, they're, they're not very common yet in esports. Uh, it's a very commonly misconcepted uh, thing that um, why would we need to train our bodies because we're just gamers. So uh, we're just uh, we're just doing cognitive work um but uh, unfortunately to many um your head is also attached to the rest of your body uh so you need to take care of both and taking care of your physical health can and will enhance your uh, mental function and your cognitive function as well as the performance uh so you have to take care of both there are no shortcuts um if your brain works well now uh, and you forget about your body, that is not going to continue going upwards um, in the future. Uh, so we've seen probably in the last year and continuing forward during this year, uh, a lot of teams have started to adopt um, wellness practices, which is really nice. Uh, there have been partnerships with uh, gym brands uh, there has been uh, a lot of talking about uh, being physically fit, uh, sleeping well, hydration, and all of these good practices that we know uh, we should be doing. Uh, so my goal today is to give a little bit of, uh, of info on that. Um, of course, it, there's very little that can be fit within the time we have today, but um, as much as I can. And... Uh, to just give a few tips and tricks, uh, feel free to ask questions in the uh, in the chat and I'll try to follow as much as I can. Uh, and with anything, of course, if you find it uh, interesting or if you have any questions, there will be links for um, contact later. So uh, please feel free. Um, so the main thing that we want to do uh, in terms of improving performance when gaming and especially in the sense of esports uh, where you want to have the uh, performance uh, improvement um, uh, we are looking at sleep and recovery because they are the main pointers uh, affecting those things uh, so what does sleep and recovery uh, affect um, the main thing is uh, how focused you are. Uh, everyone has noticed that um, your focus decreases the sleepier you get. If you are tired, you're not going to be performing that well. Uh, your energy level is going to be really low. And that also affects your cognitive function because your brain just wants to go to sleep. Um, there are other factors are anxiety and irritability. 
uh, in gaming terms, that would be how quickly you get tilted and how much that affects negatively on your performance. Um, as well as the anxiety uh, that would be before a game, uh, how anxious you get uh, can affect how well you can perform in that first game. Of course, we see usually a, a graph upwards that um, the anxiety spikes just before a match. And then with the second or third match of the game, it goes down and then tiredness takes over. So in order to uh, help with that initial anxiety, uh, a good practice before uh, the match is very necessary. Uh, the goal of it all is, again, consistent performance. Um, so what affects sleep and recovery? Um, Oftentimes, uh, it's the hype. Uh, you have just played the game or you're about to play a game. There is a lot of adrenaline going on and you are just very excited about it. Hype and that kind of excited uh, anxiety, it's, it's a good feeling as long as you can control it later on. Um, that would give you an energy level spike. However, how quickly you crash afterwards depends on what practices you took um, beforehand. Uh, another one that um, is not too often uh, talked about would be the nutrition and hydration. Uh, so in terms of uh, hydration, energy drinks will give you that uh, little spike at first, uh, but then the longer you go on energy drinks, uh, the lesser the performance you will have because it will go down. Uh, and of course, uh, what food you have. Um, being able to have your meals and snacks separated over the course of a day uh, can give you a really good advantage in terms of when your energy is highest as you need it. For example, if your uh, a scrim or if your match is in the evening then you want to make sure that you have a good meal a decent amount of time before that so that you have a good amount of energy to go through the whole match uh, especially in the longer cases of like 30 to 40 to one hour um, game matches um, going for very high calorie very heavy foods just before a game is not going to necessarily do you any service because your body can do just one thing at a time. You throw a calorie bomb in it, it's going to take care of that first and your performance will suffer uh, as opposed to getting a good quality meal a uh, good amount of time before a game and performing correctly because your body don't have to deal with uh, with digestion when, when you're in the middle of a scrim. Uh, in order to recover from all of that, let's say the game is done, uh, one thing to consider would be the lighting in your room. Uh, so what kind of lighting setup you have? How does that affect you? Uh, do you have blinking lights? Does that tire your eyes more often? Uh, is it necessary? Is it distracting? And how would that affect your performance during the game? Uh, as well as your resting after that. So uh, in terms of how all of these things affect, uh, continuously uh, adopting good techniques. Uh, let's say you have a very good uh, pre-game focusing uh, um, routine, whether that's going to be um, being in a quiet place for a little bit, whether that's going to be visualization, uh, whether it's going to be exercise, uh, warm up of your uh, of your wrists, of your hands, of your joints, um, anything that can help you calm down before a game can very much improve the performance that you have during the game itself. Um, going to uh, after a game, again, these same techniques can help you uh, wind down a lot faster, allow you for a much better recovery after the game, as well as sleep, which uh, both of those things you really need if you want to be able to perform the next day uh, in the same way. 
Uh, so being able to control the hype, uh, use it when you can before a match, just go full 100% uh, if that gives you the power, if it gives you the adrenaline, uh, just go for it. Uh, but be able to recognize how to um, how to manage beforehand and after uh, a big game. That is uh, particularly for the uh, for the competitors here. Uh, for just regular gamers, uh, it's also very useful. However, uh, if you play for fun, you can a bit better um, adjust uh, your schedule and when you're playing and how you're playing and. Uh, when you sleep as well. Uh, so in terms of the energy levels, that is a really big key, controlling the hype flow um, as well as the uh, the whole lighting setup. Uh, I don't want I don't want to give shade to anybody who has the whole RGB rainbow bonanza setup. Uh, just a uh, pro tip would be to maybe tone it a little bit down if you are competing. Um, unless, of course, you're streaming and it, it is necessary for that. But um, just a word of advice to try and, and see how it works. Um, in terms of the meals, uh, you really want to um, you really want to recognize when it's time for you to have a meal and when it's time for you to have a snack. So you want to have a, a good meal about one to two hours before a big game, which should give you a very good uh, four hours of of time during which you don't have to think about food. You don't want to end up in the position where you haven't eaten anything. You are, you have two hours before a game, you buy a big pizza and then you go into a food coma right when you're about to start competition. Um, it's not a good feeling. And you don't do yourself any justice um, in, in terms of uh, being able to perform it your best that you can, uh, which affects the team and, and so on. So being able to time these things, uh, even if it's in the evening, just being able to time them and to really know yourself when you need a little pick me up, uh, then you can have a small snack um, and adjust those according to your gaming schedule or performance schedule. Uh, in terms of uh, when to have the energy drinks, uh, they're not all bad. So I'm, I'm not going to come here and tell you that oh, you shouldn't have energy drinks. They're bad. They have their time and place. Uh, if you need, again, a little bit of a, of a pickup after, let's say, four hours after your meal, you can have one. Uh, and, and that is fine as long as you still have three to four hours left to go of the competition. Um, I would say if you are at the end of it and you really need something for that for that last hour, you could have uh, a cup of coffee instead, and that should do it as it is a bit quicker. Um, but generally, would be to uh, just try to avoid having it in the evening uh, before you go to sleep because that will affect your sleep and recovery and the next day will not be as nice. Um, of course, also starting your day with an energy ring is not, is not ideal um, because the high levels of sugar that it gives you, you get used to it. So uh, eventually you will need more of it. And the more you have, it, it doesn't make you any, um, any good service. Um, so that was a little bit of a summary. Uh, it might have sounded more like rambling to some, um, but these are just very general things to keep in mind. And once you keep them in mind, it is a lot easier to start taking the necessary steps uh, in order to improve on them, whether that is um, uh, finding out what relaxation techniques work for you, uh, whether that's uh, having consistent bedtime and waking up time. Uh, I do understand that a lot of the matches happen late in the evening, so um, Obviously, early night sleep is not going to happen uh, if, if you still have to perform before midnight. Uh, but just uh, adapting all those good, uh, good practices to what your own schedule is and what your own preferences are. There aren't necessarily one uh, right or wrong answer. Uh, the point being is that you actively take steps to um, to improve your own wellness, 
which in turn can help you in your performance. Um, does a good uh, night's sleep and a good routine make you a better player? Not necessarily, but it can help you get better at getting better play as a player. Um, so you wouldn't have to deal with those extra factors that you have the ability to um, to affect on. Uh, so in terms of uh, wellness tips, um, these are all with the goal of injury prevention, uh, as well as sleep and being consistent and eating the correct food at the correct time, uh, as well as the drinks and hydration and so on. Uh, the whole point of it is to to prevent further injury, to make sure that you can perform at the best that you can for as long as you can, that you don't have any other factors stopping you. Um, and and you can focus on building up that uh, that mastery over the game that you choose and building your skill as a player without having to worry that um, you're too tired or that you're too hungry and other external factors that can get in the way. So a few wellness tips. Um, these are very, very simple things that you can adapt, whether as a warm-up routine uh, before a game, uh, whether it's in between the matches, if you uh, have a small break, uh, whether it's uh, while waiting for respawn, because uh, uh, if you die a lot, you're going to have to wait a lot. So that's a pretty perfect timing for um, uh, for having these kind of small routines. Um, and at any other point of the day that uh, you want to incorporate them. Um, the The reasoning behind it is that it gives you a little bit of a break from holding the mouse and keyboard because the main reason why injury happens uh, in the sense of esports from what we've seen so far is overuse. So how does that work? Well, you simply do the same repetitive motion, which would be left to right with the mouse hand. You just do it too much within too short period of time it agitates the wrist and then you start to feel the symptoms. So small breaks from that, a little bit of mobilization in the wrist, shoulders, elbows, fingers. Uh, it can it can give you um, a, a bit better um, a bit better feeling, um, a bit longer time before uh, you might start to feel the symptoms. Typically, the first one would be burning. Uh, in the hand, and then it slowly develops to um, to more severe if that is not taken care of. Um, so something as simple as having a stress ball or very easy drawing a figure eight with your wrists. It's um, it's okay if it cracks a little bit. Your joints are are moving parts of your body, so uh, it's it's not a uh, uh, abnormal if they crack around, uh, so that it that is okay. Uh, they're having a little bit of elbow rotations and shoulder rotations, and as well as the uh, holding your uh, scapulas at the back together, which gives the opposite movement of what posture you would typically have during a gameplay. So um, if while playing your shoulders tend to go forward uh, while you're uh, at your computer. You want to do the opposite movement as a small break. So you pull your scapulas together, which opens up your chest and moves your shoulders backwards. Uh, then the last one here would be a very simple tendon glide, which would be uh, just to um, warm up the, um, the finger joints and the small ligaments uh, into your hands. Um, so... Um, you could do that um, as many times as you like. Uh, nothing bad is going to happen from that. Um, I would personally advise that you adapt it as a break time uh, in between matches as well as uh, a warm-up routine before the game. Uh, you might have heard quite often teams talking about bringing hot hands to, um, to the game. Uh, so that is one way you can do that. Uh, these warm-ups, they... Um, they increase the blood flow in the uh, in the joints and in the hands. Uh, they 
let your body move a little bit and let your muscles know that, um, okay, now you are ready. The same idea as when doing an exercise at the gym, you want to have warmed up body uh, in order to do it safely, in order to do it correctly, uh, in order to be able to withstand the weights that you want to do. And of course, to uh, not injure yourself. And a warm up is a pretty good point uh, to have before doing any kind of performance. And esports is performance. So it, it's not any different than, um, than traditional sports or uh, any leisure time activity that involves uh, physical activity. So uh, warm up should definitely not be overlooked. Um, as well as on the right, you can see uh, a couple of very simple tips for um, sleeping. Uh, again, uh, as mentioned, the games tend to go very, uh, very late uh, during the evening. So having uh, as consistent bedtime and wake up time as possible uh, if esports is your full time uh, career, uh, being able to have a good environment that would go under the uh, environment ergonomics. So uh, you want to have a very, very cool place if possible. Uh, darkening, especially in Finland, now that we are going towards the uh, nightless nights and the sun shines at 12 o'clock uh, at night, it's um, it's very difficult to find uh, a good sleeping pattern. So um, being able to uh, darken your space according to when you go to sleep is, uh, is something that I would highly recommend. Um, being able to uh, essentially log out um, a good amount of time before you go to sleep. Uh, that would include leaving your phone away, uh, just switching off the computer and doing something else for about half an hour to an hour before you go to sleep. Um, you want to give your brain the time to uh, relax after the performance you have just done and to really get into that point of, okay, now it's time for recovery. Now it's time to sleep. Uh, let's rest. And then the next day you can have the, uh, the good amount of energy to do it all over again. Um, which can, of course, ensure the longevity of, um, of the performance. Um, all kinds of techniques can be done for that. There is no right and wrong. It's basically what works for you. Uh, whether it's listening to music, uh, having your lighting setup turned from the RGB towards more warm, wi uh, warm white uh, or type of... Uh, orangey tint colors uh, can also uh, promote more sleep, uh, sleep mood. Uh, doing uh, very simple exercises before sleep. Um, that could be uh, whether it's stretching, going for a run, going for a walk or something like that. That is not too high intensity, uh, but it's enough to get your body tired. The idea behind it being that um, while you are playing, it is a lot of cognitive performance that is being used. Uh, so while your brain has gotten to that level, your body has been standing still. Um, and the body functions do continue. Your um, blood pressure will rise. Your um, breathing will increase during playtime but your muscles are not necessarily tired. So you want to get also the body as tired uh, while during exercise, your cognitive function will decrease uh, because again, your body can do one thing at a time. So that is one way for um, your mind to calm down and for your body to also get the chance to get tired. Um, and after which you can have uh, a much better quali quality of sleep uh, which leads to better recovery and is one step towards um, getting um, a better experience on the next day um, when you are um, going for a uh, for next round of matches. Um, so these are my little tips and tricks for today. It's a little bit short, uh, but I wanted to leave some time for uh, questions uh, in case there are some as this is all um, 
very very depending on the person uh the whole profession is uh depending on the person so um these are some very general uh health uh and wellness advices that you can give a try um uh we're gonna try and uh give you access to the presentation so that you can uh, come over go over the um the advices and exercises or if anything else felt interesting um but um i hope that was useful for uh for a lot of you and that um it at least got you thinking about um what could you do during the next break that you have um, for any questions that you might have, or if you want a consultation, uh, if you want to just come say hi, um, you can find me on Discord, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, these are the places where I'm most active. Uh, you can find my research, which is Carpal Tunnel Syndrome Symptoms in Esports Players, published in 2020 at thesius.fi. Uh, you can find Body Entrepreneurship Society at bodyes.fi. And the event that we've got cooking up uh, is called Your Future in Pixels. So make sure to keep an eye on that. Um, of course, for my team, you can go to rootsgaming.fi. All right. So now, uh, after that, I know you covered a lot of information, so there may not be uh, an abundance of questions because that was very informative. So thank you very much for that. But uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the various questions that have come uh, throughout. But th there was quite uh, a lot. But some of the most recent ones is, how do you get back from burnout? So uh, I'm guessing based on this, it's uh, you gave a lot of, of valuable information regarding how to avoid burnout. But what happens if, for, for whatever reason, uh, you get to the point where either as a player or as a business professional, you become burnt out? Uh, do you have any tips on how you can recover from that? Yeah, so that is... Uh fantastic question and it's unfortunately very common uh, especially in esports uh, I think in order to get back from burnout uh, we have to discuss how do you even get to the point of a burnout and it's a very complicated issue uh, because it's not just one thing that can cause it mm -hmm. uh, typically it happens over a very long period of time and the general rule is that um the recovery takes as long as it took for the burnout to happen. And typically it is uh, rehabilitation after it has happened and it is a multi-professional. So depending on how um, how it happened uh, in esports, the few cases that we've seen have been uh, a combination of uh, increasing symptoms um, leading to injury and uh, I want to stress on this because um, especially in carpal tunnel syndrome the period during which it can be treated um, without surgery is about half a year so uh, kind of a disclaimer to people if you do have any consistent uh, feeling of burning numbness um, discomfort in your upper arm uh, elbow or hand uh, just see a physiotherapist um, or whoever uh, is available near you just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, uh, so, of course, continuous uh, strenuous uh, symptoms uh, that can lead to uh, performance dropping, which leads to more stress for the player, which leads to more work uh, overworking, which leads to more stress. Uh, due to more symptoms and it just keeps going and going and going until at some point you just basically cannot go anymore yeah. uh, that's when the uh, the burnout happens so being able to really recognize at what point is it going too much and um, being able to take the steps to um, to kind of tone it down and and get better uh, is very much imperative um, in a team setting, I wish there were more uh, clinical professionals who could uh, spot these things because that's what we are trained to do, um, to see the yellow flags, the red flags, and really take uh, take note and make sure we, we prevent it from happening. Um, I wish there was more of that in esports. And thankfully, uh, it is increasing, uh, the amount of healthcare professionals uh, getting into the field. Um, but that would be the the imperative uh, in in cases of burnout. 
it's very complicated to treat. Um, you need a quite large team of professionals to really handle it. Um, you can take the right steps afterwards. It's never like it, it, it's not a case of now I got a burnout. It's all done for me. It, that That's not the case. Uh, mm -hmm. You can recover and you can get back into the game in the future uh by adopting better practices and um and really taking care of yourself uh, so it's not the end of the world even if it happens just that it will take a while to get better uh, but um that is why it's important to talk about these things before they happen yeah exactly okay getting to the source before it becomes an issue Yes. Uh, an another question in chat from Tapifin says, do you believe that proper ergonomics affects your vitality and performance in esports? Um, I think ergonomics is, uh, is a good thing to have in terms of uh, when you're buying a bed, you want to have a bed that is comfortable for you. So obviously when you're thinking of ergonomics at the workspace, you want to have a setup that is built around how you use your setup, how you sit, how you um, how you how you like to play. Um, however, it's not necessarily going to to help the performance uh, in in a way that most people like to think that it does. And <laughs> I'm I'm trading very carefully here <laughs> um, because it's a it's a minefield. Um, not trying to offend anybody yes. um but I, I would say that much more important would be uh being able to take breaks and to do actively um uh, the warm-up routines the winding down routine and uh just to really make sure that your body is taken care of uh so that the time during which you play is not affecting you in a in a very negative way. Um, we have seen a lot of shift in the ergonomics field uh, in the last few years. Uh, it has gone a lot towards we have ergonomic setups. That means the person is automatically going to be uh, fixed into that setup, yes. and it's all going to be great. Um, that, that's not how it works. Um, having the the ultimate uh, 5K um, ergonomic chair that can keep you sitting there forever and ever, uh, that, that's not going to prevent your back pain. Yeah. Uh, your chair is not causing you the back pain. It's the, <laughs> it's the amount you sit on it. And the same thing is true for stand-up desks and so on. Um, it, it's not the setup that is causing it. It's the amount spent in the same position. So... Um, my only advice that is very general towards ergonomics is that um, you want to have a setup that fits you. Uh, so nothing that is too tall or too low for you uh, or that a mouse that is too small. Uh, you want to have a setup that fits you and then try to move around as much as possible. Um, some physios would say that the best chair is the most uncomfortable chair because then you have to constantly shift your position. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't go that far because that would take your attention away from playing and I don't want to do that. Uh, but of course, um, it's, yeah, the, just get, get things that fit you and don't trust too much on that, that the best chair is going to prevent your pain. Just take care of your body regardless of that. Um, and um, I would say during, you, you want to practice the, some of the time versus most of the time uh, kind of uh, rule when it comes to ergonomics. So during most of the time, which would be your free time using a computer or if you use it for work or studies or something else, uh, as well as for your leisure time, uh, you want to have the um, as good setup as possible mm -hmm. uh, or ergonomic and so on. But for the some of the time during which you will be competing, uh, you can just have whatever makes you uh, the most comfortable in terms of performance um, so that nothing else takes your, uh, your attention away from the game. Perfect. Awesome. And I don't want to take too much of your time, so I'll do one final question. I think this is a very important one. I think uh, if you're coming from the position of a 
an organization or a team owner or a team manager. A uh, question from Spoke was, what is the best way to deliver to players the importance of well-being so it does not sound like homework or something that they're forced to do? So if you're in a position of being a team owner or a team manager, uh, how can you get the point across to the others on your team, be it the players or the other uh, members in management, that this is very important? Because you can see in the industry, not every team, or you could even say that the majority of teams do not have a physical trainer uh, on their staff, and perhaps they do not see the importance of it. So how could you get that across to the rest of the management or to your players themselves, that this is truly something that you have to put the time into and the energy? Um it's a very uh, it's a very difficult question, and it's also the million dollar question. <laughs> like, how do you get people to do what you want them to yes. do? Um, because it's good for them uh, when they don't see that it's good for them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of esports, a lot of players are very young; they don't have any pain, uh, they don't have any symptoms. They can just go on for fifteen hours a day, no problem. Um, so nobody sees the point in why should i bother now i'm young i'm healthy and i don't have any issues so it's uh it's pointless for me to spend the time on on that and from the team's perspective uh a lot of them see this as um as a pointless expense uh in the sense of well our players are young and and they can play so we don't need to take care of that uh the reason behind is that for players and for teams also do you want to be able to play or do you want your players to be able to still play next year mm -hmm. on the same level or better um so that's where performance coaching comes into place we want to make sure that the same uh talents are also there next year and that they keep coming back better and better um and in terms of how to promote that to the teams um if there is a a good player, why wouldn't you want to keep it? Why wouldn't you want to invest in in having those good players that bring the audience that um, that really perform and that can get you that win in the end? Uh, so traditional sports have figured that out already, uh, but I think esports are just starting to wake up to it. Uh, the the long term athlete development is uh, is just getting there. Um, and how to get that across a whole team. Um, I would say that in order for it to really work, it has to come from the whole team. Uh, you can have uh, two people wanting to, to follow good practices and uh, go to bed at a decent time and work out and, and so on. And then everybody else from the team stays and banters until after midnight and and does other things uh, after the games are done or uh, during the practice sessions that they don't, they're not fully committed to it. Um, it is very difficult to uh, to continue. So um, if there are any team owners uh, watching this, uh, I would highly recommend that um, it is enforced from the top, uh, the same that it is in every other sport out there. Um, it's uh, in sense of, the talent, the, the players, it's not their job to know what is best for them, essentially. That is our coaches' job uh, because we have spent the time studying and we have spent the time uh, working on developing these techniques. So um, the players are not necessarily the ones that need to know what is best for them. Uh, they just need to have a good coaching throughout and their job to be uh, to do what they're told and then to show up and perform. And on our part, that would be to make sure that uh, they are well taken care of and that they are able to perform for as long as possible, um, which both of these things are exactly what the teams would want to just keep winning.